Okay, hi. Hello, everybody. Uh, Lily's sitting for me again. Um, remember I did the side profile of Lily. I'm going to do her ear this time. Okay, right. So let's see. I've asked her to sit underneath the light so that there's enough light on there. Um, okay. It's funny, the camera kind of... I'm going to just make it go a little bit lower because when I turned on the camera to record it, it kind of zoomed in a bit closer. And that meant I had to hold up the picture too high. That's okay now. Yeah. Okay, so I've got my palette over here. And yeah, so I'm going to start by mixing up some of that color that I used before. Um, for the cheek so that I can extend the cheek a little bit further back. You'd see that the light part is about the same width as the slightly dark part and then that's the beginning of the ear. So I'm just going to let this colour come down so that it's creating that kind of pathway over to the ear. And then really when I do that, the next thing to, that I want to do is the colour of the hair just here. And again, actually finding the position of the ear between the front of the head and the back of the head is um, is a very helpful way of, uh, it's a good thing to locate really, just finding the position of the ear um, is important, you know, you need being aware of where it, where it sits in relation to the front of the face and the back of the head. But of course we haven't got the full portrait here, we haven't got the back of the head, so... Um, I'm just finding the hair like where the hair stops and the skin behind the ear starts there. Just as a way of creating a landscape within which the ear is going to sit. Okay, so I'm going to move down to a slightly smaller brush now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the one inch, one inch brush I'm using. It's dirty. No, so what I'm going to do first is to kind of outline the shape of the ear. So there's a few different directions, yes. So I'm just going to find first where the lobe of the ear sits on a horizontal in relation to the nose. So the bottom of the ear looks to me to be about level on a horizontal with the nose. The bottom of the nose. And I think it needs to sit a bit farther forward. So it looks like it's, it's about here. And then... There's a diagonal kind of going back like that for a little while and then there'll be um, a kind of an arc here. And I just want to s decide where it's where the top of the ear is before making that arc. Um, and I see that the top of the ear is a little bit below the eyebrow, the dark of the eyebrow there. Uh, so the top of the ear be about there, which makes me believe that the bottom of the ear needs to sit forward further than I've got it. Actually, not that much further. Yeah, but it's clear enough that, um, you know, the bottom of the ear is connecting with the face further forward than the top is. Um, now, while that's all still wet, I can't really clarify it very much, so I'm going to just use the, the dark of the skin behind to come in and meet the light that's falling on the top of the ear there. Just getting the feeling for the shape of the rough shape of the ear by painting the skin up to meet it. So there's no value really within the ear yet. I'm just putting, um, I'm going to mix the cadmium red and the sap green together to make a colour for the skin of the head that coming up to meet the back of the ear there. Um, It's good to find similar values elsewhere. Okay. And yeah, like it's kind of good to begin locating the rest of it as well, but okay, but it is about ears. So I'm going to go back up here now and find the um, shape of the, the hollow within the ear. So using the brush that's closest to the size of that shape. I'm going to make as few marks as I can to do, just 
describe that the hollow in there and then there's um yeah it's like when i half close my eyes really all of this is quite uh, softly merging from the face into the ear and we put a little bit of cadmium red so it's the cadmium red into the mix in order to just warm up the whole area here because really the ear does need to be it, it does tend to be quite warm in uh, tone and color okay and the lobe of the ear has some warmth on it there as well really with the eyes half closed you can kind of see the color see the tone and the the main darks and lights just move to a slightly smaller brush now and i'm going to go to the bit that's um not got any color on it yet which is and which needs to be given some value because this here is a little bit darker than the light up here and um, now that red is a little bit i'm going to put some cerulean blue into that red because I feel like it's it's got too much brightness to it. A bit of cerulean blue in it will kind of make it a little bit more purplish. And then we'll come down. See how are we for time? Through about halfway through Lily, a bit over halfway through. I didn't realise you were so good at um modelling. We'd be roped into the summer school now. Um, Okay, I'm just going to make more of that cerulean blue and cadmium red mix. And I'm noticing that there are things that once the area around is dry, I need to go back and re-establish the dark here. It might be dry enough. Not really. It's more wet and wet now that's happening. But this is still clear paper, so I can put the dark shadow here. There's like three... There's like three little cavities in the ear. Butterfly. Butterfly. Yeah, just, just <laughs> <laughs> she does this all the time, you know. Just goes around to slap in her, fa her face. Lily, could you lift your chin a little bit? Okay, so I put in a little bit of a darker tone into the original cavity in the ear there. Yeah, I think it's starting to read as a year. Um, okay, and probably would help to paint the skin up to meet it again. Because really, when I half close my eyes, the, the light on the lobe of the ear is the brightest part of that whole area. And it's not yet reading as that, because down here is all white paper still. Let it uh, sit for a tiny bit and just show you um, step a step by step um, portrait. I don't know why I'm showing you this because it's too small really for you to see. This is a good book, How to Paint a Portrait, and it's um, by the Skyers Portrait Artist of the Year. There's a number of different artists in there um, from the few years of the Sky Portrait Artist of the Year. And I was just going to show you a step by step that I did in that. That's a three quarter view of the ear. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe I could just do this from yesterday's. Lily, will you turn and face me? Okay, so a couple of minutes. I want to let that dry, you see. So if you face me, I can put an ear on this. So this was um, Hope. Lily's older sister. If you turn completely towards me, that's perfect. That's great. And so when Lily's looking straight at me, her ear is a little bit higher than uh, Lily looks straight at me. Her ear is a little bit higher than the bottom of the nose. And I've got a darkish colour on there now, but I just want to kind of illustrate roughly the shape that you're looking at when you're painting an ear from the side. No, when you're painting an ear from the front. The dark of the hair coming down. Okay. Um, because I feel like there's just another couple of small things to be introduced there, but I need the, the paper dry first. 
So you just do this here from the front. Just putting a bit of cadmium red on the brush. And you can get away, similar to the nose, really you can get away with very little explaining in the ear as long as um, there's just something for the lo in the right location and it's what as why it's you judge the width of the ear and the height of the ear and uh, once you've got the width and the height then you're just finding some kind of a shadow inside you're trying to you're trying not to take off my accent aren't you <clears throat> anyway I've got the microphone so you won't be heard mm -hmm. Unless you really shout, which you're not going to do, hopefully. Okay, so something like that, just to indicate the position of the ear and um, tones within it. And now, in the last minute, can you go back again, actually? And in the last minute, um, as Lily swiftly assumes her position, I'm going to put some of the deepest tones back into the into the area of the ear to to meet the dark tones that are here in the gosh that was alizarin crimson and i should really have used brown and blue i think okay so ultramarine blue brown ultramarine blue and van dyke brown okay lily in the same position as you were before yeah there's a bit of dark here you know it's still quite wet so i don't want that to be a fuzzy edge I think that works. Printing it, I think, worked there to create um, that clarity that I'm wanting up for the light that's falling on the top of the ear. And then there's just a couple of little extra dark bits inside there and here. Yeah, 